The first thing we need to do with the popcorn machine is tear it down, separate what needs to be sandblasted and what needs to go to the chrome shop. Chrome box. The reason we don't do chrome here is because it's a real expensive process. We would have to do a lot of it to make it profitable. When Kyle finds this in a box, he won't know what the hell this is. So we got to get a picture of it so he knows it goes right there. Kyle's in charge of assembly. It's his job to put everything back together, OK? When you're working on machines that are this old, there's no manual. We take a lot of pictures because we use it as a guide to put the machines back together. No cash. <laughs> Unfortunately. Man, we got this one. Boom. Secret, see that? That's so somebody couldn't just take that drawer and yank it out of there and go. That wouldn't stop me. One of the big projects we have going on right now is this vintage toy train. Bretley's gonna sandblast all the old paint and rust off of it. In order to make every single project as authentic as possible, I have to do a lot of research on it. This train was manufactured in 1957 when toys were actually made out of metal. And back then, toys were meant to last. We got a ton going on right now. I need to get this popcorn machine painted as soon as possible so that I can get the pinstriper started on the graphics. The train's coming along awesome, but it's a ton of work. So when Bill offered to drop off some parts, I didn't even hesitate. It's going to cost a little money, but it's going to save a lot of time. Those are just perfect. Those are exactly like the original. Ideally, I like to use all original parts and just restore them. It's <laughs> awesome. But when you're dealing with something so rare, sometimes you just have to manufacture them. It lowers the value a little, but you could spend the rest of your life searching for them and never find them. So there's eight of these, there's two long straights, and there's two short straights. God dang, those are nice. I want to thank you guys very, very much. Anytime. I could not have done that without Our you. Pleasure, Rick. Thank you. The last thing we've got to do on this popcorn machine is the artwork on the body. So I called my pen striper Ted, and he's got a great design all sketched out. Sketch out how you want it to look. Okay. Sketch it on there with a pounce wheel. Okay. It's a little, little gizmo with a sharp little spikes on it, and you just roll, trace around. It actually perforates the paper, and then. After the holes are punched in it, we uh, take a little bag of powdered charcoal. Okay. Same uh, technique that uh, Michelangelo used on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. It's that old. Okay. And uh, you rub a little charcoal over that. Uh huh. And and then this gives me something. Oh yeah, to so go that's by. your pattern right there. That's cool. Pen striping dates back beyond the horse-drawn buggy days, but it didn't get popular until the 1950s. And then you just hand do it with the rest it'll of it. It'll be hand painted in, right? Well, you do your thing. I'll let you go to it. All right. Good enough. Pen striping is one of the hardest parts of doing a restoration, but it also adds that final touch. Ted has 25 years of experience, but even he is still learning. The scary thing is it doesn't take much to mess up, and that means starting over with sandblasting. The best pen striping brushes are from Blue Squirrel Hair. These brushes will hold a tremendous amount of paint. We've been working really hard on this train that I bought from a scrapper. I plan on reselling this thing, so I want it to look just like it did back in the day. The problem is, we don't have the train back cars that it had when it was new, so we're going to have to make them from scratch. What I need is uh, 13 inches by 40 inches. We have to have the base, and then we're also going to do some wooden slats to hold the kit inside there so it doesn't slide off. This is a perfect job for my own kit, so Tyler and Cowboy are going to make the base. Get it in there right now. All right. Well, here we go. Ready? push. The lip on the steel will make it a much stronger body. Perfect. 90 degree angle. It has to be so precise. Nice. 
What's really important is that we make both of them exactly the same. Make it very accurate because we need that cut exactly down that line. If we're off a sixteenth of an inch, um, it's going to look different. So it's very important for us to hit that thing right on the head. All right. That's how you cut wood. These ride-on toys were manufactured for only a couple years, like 1957 to 1958, which makes this thing super rare. So we have to pay attention to every single detail. See if it fits. Okay. That looks nice. Nice. That's awesome, huh? Oh, yeah. Make this thing from scratch. We're the. We are the. At a boy. <laughs> <laughs>